How many of y'all are guilty of having tons of enamel pins and buttons in your collection? They say something cool, they look really awesome, and you don't have any place to put them. I'm gonna show you how I use this simple felt letter board, and yes, it's a felt one, it's not one of the plastic ones, how to turn this into this, and ultimately, a wall installation. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow me on all things social, and let's get to it. All right, so the first step in spray painting this is masking off this lovely felt before we can start spray painting the frame for our letter board. Now I have some thin paper. This is actually from just a desk pad that you get from your office supply store. It was big enough, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to measure the diameter of this and then I will use a circle cutter to try and approximate that um, circumference. So I want the I want the diameter of this to be slightly larger because one thing that I noticed about this particular letter board is that you can slip underneath the edge of this frame. So that's what I'm gonna want to do. I'm gonna want to tuck my paper underneath this little lip to provide that masking so I can get this inside edge also spray painted. Now these are just really big circle cutting tools. I've had limited success with these. Um, I think I tend to use the EK Success one more than I do the uh, Martha Stewart one. Um, so I'm going to attempt to use this one to see if I actually get a decent result this time. So this is the entire diameter. What I want is I want, so the frame is about, I don't know, a little less than an inch. So maybe just a little bit more than that. I'm just eyeballing it. So maybe that and then the center would be that would kind of be the center it's not a perfectly straight line but that's okay so this tool has the center point so you're gonna want to find the center and then it has a line on here and so I'm gonna want to line that up with the inside, so there we go, and then I want to tighten it down, and then you push down, and you kind of just cut around. Now this paper does move around a little bit when you're cutting, I don't know why, so I just kind of like to run it back and forth. Um, so there we go, that's not that great of a circle. Like I said, I don't usually get that great of a result with this, but you know, we're not looking for perfection in this project. We're just looking to, um, we're just looking to create a mask for this. So we want the circle to be slightly larger than our And our exposed surface for the letter board. So we are looking for perfect circles, not in this project. All right, clear off this work surface. Pull out our unpainted letter board and see how we fared. Now that is a little bit larger um, than that, but that's okay. We can just have it kind of slope up in the middle and that will be okay. So let's just let's pull off this extra piece and start kind of tucking this in to our frame. Don't wanna fold it over just yet, but we do wanna kind of get it in there. I know this isn't pretty, but we're not looking to win any beauty contests here. We're just looking for something functional. 
And this is just a spatula tool that I think I got with um, some gelatos in a, in a pack where you can experiment and play around. Just a mixing tool. Um, as long as it's super thin, it's going to fit under the edge of this. But then again, everyone's um, frame is going to be different. So just keep that in mind. I will definitely link below the letter board that I, um, that I wanted. That I, well, not that I wanted. The letter board that I got. Um, I originally wanted to get the hexagon ones, but I think they were out of stock and they just sent me the circle ones. Um, so, you know, it actually works for what I want to do, so I'm not terribly upset. Um, they did throw in some extra things, so... There we go. Oh, looks like a tiny peak of black right here that we kind of want to, don't want to spray paint our felt, we only want to spray paint our frame. So there we go, we've got one side done. Let's do the same for the other side, just in case I, you know, eventually want to use a side and that way this project is done and I can have the choice of either side at any point. All right, there we go. We've got that masked. Next thing to do is I am going to actually prime this. Um, my first one I did not, and it ended up taking three to four coats of spray paint. So I'm gonna try to prime this one with white primer and then spray paint the gold on top of it. So we'll see how that turns out. Let's go to the garage. All right, here we have our masked letter board and we're in a ventilated area i'm in my garage so let's get to spraying let's get all the angles just want to make sure to get the edges really well because the frame is mdf and it just soaks up spray paint and all sorts of paint so i want to make sure that i get these edges really well there we go. And now we wait. We'll flip it over in a little bit once everything has kind of had a chance to dry just a little bit and then we'll do the other side. All right, it has been half an hour. I'm going to flip this over and spray paint this side. Let's give our spray paint a shake. This is the primer that I'm using. It's what was available at my local I don't know, uh, home improvement store. I'm gonna spray this upside down, clear the nozzle. We're gonna wait another half an hour. We'll flip it over and then we'll spray paint the gold. So another half an hour to go. All right, so let's flip it over back to the other side and start painting our gold. I'm using Rust-Oleum, pure gold. I just have a little bit left in this can, but I have a All right, we're gonna let this sit for somewhere between half an hour and an hour before we flip it over, and then we'll spray the opposite side. All right, we've flipped it over to the other side, so let's shake up the new pan. All right, I'll probably do a second coat on this one, um, just because the 
edges aren't quite perfectly done and I don't want to have too thick a coat. So we'll let this sit um, another hour and we'll flip it over and spray it again. All right, flipping and painting again. All right, there we go, let's let it dry. All right, this one is done and we're gonna do the same thing to the next one. All right, here we have a finished letter board. So you know how I put the paper in, let's pull the paper out and see how we did. Now I did have to spray paint this quite a few, I gave it quite a few coats, um, just because the MDF really just kind of soaks it up and isn't really um, super smooth. So, but I did prime it first. And there we go. Just a little bit of cleanup right here. And uh, we'll be good to go, but this is not the side I plan to use. This is the gray. I'm gonna use the black side. So let's see how that turned out. There we go, look at that. Look at that, that is going to look amazing on the wall. All right, I have one more um, spray painting and that's gonna take the majority of the day to spray and let it dry and flip it over. Um, but in the meantime, while we are waiting for the last one to be finished, I'm going to show y'all how to put a sawtooth hanger on this. Now these originally came with just easels to kind of prop them up on, but I want these hanging on my wall. So the easiest way to hang something on your wall is gonna be with a sawtooth hanger. So let's get started. All right, in order to hang these, you're going to need these sawtooth hangers. Um, I brought my own screwdriver, but this did come with its own, and a power screwdriver, just in case I wanna go a little bit faster. But honestly, a manual screwdriver is really all you're gonna need. So I'm gonna start up here, and we're gonna end up putting our sawtooth hanger up at the top here. So we have a sawtooth hanger. We have this tiny screwdriver. And we have some small screws. I chose the gold color just because I thought it would blend in a little bit more if I do ever try to change this to the other side and hang it with the black side in the back and the gray side out front. So we just need one two of these screws. But I, you could measure this, but honestly, I'm just gonna do this kind of by eye, and for the most part, it's gonna be okay. So, I'm just gonna try to keep the sawtooth hanger parallel to this first line and just in the middle of that, and that will be, that'll be good enough. Just keep it in the middle of the frame because you want to go into the meat or the wood of the frame. So I'm gonna try it with uh, this tiny screwdriver that they gave me, um, just because these are a little bit smaller heads. So let's see. All right, I have a smaller end on this. I think, yeah, I think I'm gonna get a little bit better grip on that. So it's nice that they included it if you didn't have a screwdriver that had a small end, but this is a really cool one because it has um, tips that you can switch around from Phillips to flathead in two sizes. Um, this is from a now defunct auto parts place um, from where I grew up in, in uh, North Carolina. So I will try and find something comparable because this is really valuable just to have in your house, just having small and large Phillips and flathead screwdriver tips. So let's get back to trying to get this attached. 
that. And then if you're screwing things in, you just kind of want to hold it up and then push down as you try and screw it in. And there we've got that one. And we're not gonna go all the way in with the first one. We're going to get both of them in the general vicinity. And then as we screw down, we can adjust the sawtooth hammer just a little bit because the holes do provide just a little bit of play. Set the other one. And if at first you don't succeed, try, try, try again. These are small screws and I do know some people in the reviews took issue with that, but these, this is just going into a small picture frame and you don't need super long screws for this. Just try to keep it upright and then push down with the palm of your hand on the screwdriver. And take your time, you don't have to go super quick. My screw was catching on the edge of the hole. So I readjusted my sawtooth hanger and now that's going in just fine. All right, so now that I have them kind of set, I'm gonna put this one in just a little bit more. This is the time when I would recommend if you do have a power screwdriver, is to go ahead and drill those in. And we will do that. Don't get it all the way down in there. There we go. There's a hot sawtooth hanger installed. It'll just get hung up on the wall. We'll bang a nail into the wall and hang it from there. And I'll show that next. All right, well, we have one, and then we have another one that is just finished spray painting. All right, we've got our last one to unmask. Let's pull this paper out and see how, see how we did. There we go, look at that. Just a little lint brush and all we need to do is clean that up. All right, and we did the back side too. Just pulling that paper out. Gently easy does it. I really want to go too fast. There we go. And we have another side that looks really good, y'all. Okay, so all we need to do for this last one is also put the sawtooth hanger on and then we'll be ready to hang these on the wall. All right, look at that. That is ready to hang. All right, now that we have the sawtooth hangers in all of our boards, I'm gonna do a few measurements so I can translate that to the wall layout. So these are circles, so they should be, they are 12 inches by 12 inches, which means six inches is going to be um, the radius of the circle. Um, so we will use those measurements to hang accordingly. Now I'm going to be combining this with some more of my geometric gems with more of these that get mounted on the wall. 
So these are all less than 12 inches in diameter. So I'll just have to, I'll just measure by eye, making sure they are centered up with these letter boards. Let's start measuring and marking things out on the wall. It's getting a little real here. All right, for this next bit, at minimum, you're gonna want a pencil, a picture hanging kit, or some nails that are in there, a hammer, and I would highly recommend a level. It just makes sure that all your measurements are spot on, and especially if you're leaning over something the way that you will see how I am in a minute, um, it really makes you, it makes sure that your bearings are actually correct and not incorrect, because a level, levels don't lie. All right, so let me get the camera set up over there and I will uh, go over the measurements that I used in my space. Maybe it'll help y'all. So let's head over to the desk area. All right, so here is my corner that I'm going to be installing them on. Now, I don't know if y'all recognize, but earlier this is my wall control, but this is a lovely blank corner so we're gonna fill it with those letter those letter boards so um i think i forgot to say definitely a tape measure so what i'm gonna do is i'm going to be measuring down from the ceiling eight inches and over nine inches and then marking and then having six inches in between each of the 12 inch diameter letter boards. And since you have your handy dandy level and you've measured one side where we're gonna have two of our letter boards, all you need to do is drop down your lines and measure over from the corner so you can have really good straight measurements. And then I've also measured out over here. So let me pick y'all up and show you. All right, so here we have our corner. I'm going to take y'all up the ladder. And as you can see, there is a mark. There is a mark. And there is a mark. So we're going to be banging hole, we're going to be putting nail holes in the X's and then we'll be able to hang everything. Let's get to it. It looks like I have three nails to choose from. A longer one, a middle sized one, and a small one. I think we're going to go with the longest one and we'll just bang those in the wall. When you're banging your nails in, you wanna make sure to go in at an angle. All right, let's test fit these and see how they work. All right, what do we think? There we go. We'll finish it up with some extra zhuzhes and um, we'll go from there. All right, first off, let's lint brush this board. We're gonna do a small little layout that we're gonna hang on the wall. Already got one done, it's pretty simple. There we go. This is the top. And here are some pins. All right, for the enamel pins, what I like to do, and you could use these exclusively for all of your collector enamel pins that you have, but I like to take the back off, and then all you do is you're just gonna stick it in one of the grooves and then just push down and it's just gonna stay in there from the tension on the pin back. 
All right, so how I get these to stay is you open them up and then you just kind of find a groove that you want to stick these in and just stick it in a groove. There you go. You can just stick it in there and then that'll be good. Yes, life is tough, but so are you. And honestly, I'm not thinking too much about the layout. I just want to kind of get some good coverage on here. And I want them to be, you know, kind of super empowering. And this one, sometimes the pin backs are just in odd places. Sometimes you can get them to turn around. Sometimes you just kind of have to finagle it yourself and get it in there. There we go. Now, I think on my last one, I had a, um, just a cutout from the back of a Teresa Collins package because she has some really great quotes on the back of her package. So let's try to find some printed material to put on here. And then I think we'll probably be done. All right, so I found the packaging for the Happy Inspirational Pin Set. And you know what? All of these little pieces are fun little goodies. So I'm gonna chop them all up and see what works on this layout. And incidentally, they still have the sticky backs on them, um, the little sticky dots that used to hold them on there. So it's gonna, so you could even just stick these without having to pin them. All right, we now have lots of little paper things to put on there. We're doing this, I am planning on doing this as more of a inspirational one. So planet isn't really there. This one is pretty cool. We can tuck that one up there. Make it kind of parallel with everything. Be the good. And we could probably just tuck that in there right like that. Think happy. There we go. And keep calm. There we go. We have another little layout. And these things are so easy to change not to mention all the lettering possibilities with the little inserts that you can do. That's what I'll do on the next one. We'll pull out some words and some letters, some pins, and we'll make another layout. And that'll be three. Letters, words, so many things. I'm gonna dig through this pile and find something that works for And here we have the final product. Just a nice little inspirational corner for my studio by my computer. Don't worry, that blank space will probably be filled in an upcoming video. Stay tuned. See y'all later. Bye.